Hi, it's Katrina. My friend David is going to be helping me out with the voiceover today, so I hope you enjoy. Number 10. The Family Jewels The Family Jewels is the name of a massive collection of reports revealed by the CIA detailing their illegal activity. These documents, most of them anyway, were released on June 25, 2007. They include inappropriate, inhuman, and some downright sick things the CIA did from between 1959 and 1973. The report as a whole was commissioned long before it was ever released. CIA Director James Schlesinger, in the wake of the Watergate disaster, ordered a complete report of all CIA actions that fell outside the usual realms of operation. The resulting report was a massive book of 693 pages, each page grislier than the last. Some of this stuff was leaked in 1974, thanks to investigative journalist Seymour Hersh, with a handful of information spilled to the New York Times. But it wasn't until 2007 that the full document was unleashed to the public, albeit with a whole lot of redactions. There is still some debate over how much of the whole report was released. That's to say, there are many out there who believe the CIA still has a lot of skeletons in their closet. Nonetheless, the CIA did reveal a lot. The Family Jewels contains information about kidnapping, wiretapping, physical surveillance of investigative journalists, assassination attempts on Fidel Castro, harassment of former CIA employees, opening mail illegally, and funding non-consensual human experiments. And that's just the beginning. Number 9. Stargate Project The CIA recently uploaded millions of declassified documents to their website. Some of these documents reveal information about the extraordinarily bizarre Stargate Project, a secret program that cost millions in taxpayer dollars to try and produce an army of psychic warriors. Yes, military soldiers with extreme cognitive abilities who are able to do things like read minds and look into the future. For years, the program worked under a whole plethora of code names. There was Gondola Wish, Sunstreak, Grill Flame, lots of weird names for individual projects. But then in the 1970s, everything was lumped into one easily manageable mission called the Stargate Project. According to the declassified documents uploaded by the CIA themselves, the sole purpose of the project was to investigate remote viewing methods. Remote viewing means the ability to see people, events, and places very far away. For example, the individual with remote viewing powers would close their eyes and be able to see a specific target on the other side of the world. It's something straight out of the X-Files, and something the CIA really did do. It wasn't just a short project either. The CIA tried to create their own army of clairvoyance up until 1995. That was when they finally agreed it wasn't going to happen. But for a while, over two decades, the CIA held on to hope that they'd be able to make their own X-Men. If the CIA came to you and asked you to participate in one of these mysterious projects, would you do it? Number 8. Operation Midnight Climax On April 10, 1953, newly appointed director of the CIA, Alan Dulles, gave an incredibly strange speech. He made the assertion that American prisoners of war coming back to the country were brainwashed by the communists. Some soldiers had apparently been so effectively brainwashed, they refused to return home. While the speech may have been fairly mundane for its time, looking back we can see exactly where Alan Dulles was going with his authority over the CIA. In the days and years to come, he would embark upon a journey to master brain warfare. He believed the Soviets had figured out how to corrupt the human mind, and he wanted to do it too. Alan was once quoted as saying, We in the West are somewhat handicapped in brain warfare. Three days after the speech was made, Alan Dulles approved Operation MK Ultra. This was a covert program in which biological and chemical materials would be used to help master manipulation of the mind. What followed were horrific experiments involving electroshock therapy hypnosis, radiation, and drugs. Some test subjects volunteered freely, others were coerced into having their brains scrambled. The CIA went so far as to use mentally ill children and American soldiers in their experiments. But by far, the CIA loved using prisoners as test subjects the most in exchange for shorter sentences. In 1957, the CIA conducted tests at an Atlanta penitentiary where eight convicts were left in hopelessly paranoid states. They were hallucinating, they couldn't eat anything, and were heard screaming from their cells at night. 
This was all because the government was injecting them with LSD. The LSD experiments were part of a sub-program named Operation Midnight Climax. To put things simply, the CIA was casually dosing American citizens with huge amounts of LSD. And now for number 7. But first I wanted to give a big shout to Joker Locuson. Thanks so much for watching and supporting OE. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe and join the family. Number 7. Assassinations Ever since 1945, the CIA has been busy deposing and killing leaders all over the globe. They were extremely proficient at assassinations up until the 1970s, when investigations from the Senate caused them to slow down a bit. They appear to have stopped murdering people in the modern age, or they've just gotten better at hiding it. What we know from revealed documents is that the CIA killed a lot of people and occasionally failed at killing people as well. The CIA tried to kill Cuban President Fidel Castro so many times, it's embarrassing they never managed to do it. They tried to kill Fidel Castro in ways so bizarre, you would think they got the ideas from a Bugs Bunny cartoon sketch. They tried to shoot him with long-range snipers, they tried to take him out with exploding cigars. There was even an attempt that involved a scuba suit lined with poisonous rubber. In the 1960s, the CIA sent a scientist to the Congo to kill their first prime minister, Patrice Lumumba. The scientist was ordered to infect the prime minister with a lethal virus. But before he could do the assassination, the leader was removed through other means. Also in the 1960s, the CIA targeted Dominican dictator Rafael Trujillo for assassination, Indonesian President Sukarno, and Vietnamese President Ngo Dinh Diem. The CIA also helped to overthrow Chile's President Salvador Allende in 1973 because he was too left-wing, too liberal for 1970s Americans. In 1986, the CIA tried to bomb Muammar Gaddafi in Libya. In 1999, they tried to get rid of Serbia's Slobodan Milosevic. We know about the older assassination attempts because they were revealed in documents. Anything recent is just speculation. According to a leaked report from 2014, the CIA has taken to hacking car control systems. They can supposedly make anybody's vehicle crash from a remote location. Number 6. Operation Northwoods Operation Northwoods was a false flag operation that started with the US Department of Defense in 1962. Revealed CIA documents have shown exactly how far the US government was willing to go to provoke war with Cuba. Operation Northwoods proposed that CIA operatives perform acts of violent terrorism against civilians in the USA. The plan called to either blow up a US ship with civilians on board, to assassinate Cuban immigrants, to shoot down a US Air Force fighter craft, or to attack a US city directly. Whatever route they chose, the violent act and the gruesome deaths would be blamed on the Cubans. The whole idea was to rally the US people against Cuba, gaining national support for a war. This next part is really scary and extremely controversial despite being true. One of the recommendations of Operation Northwoods was for a plane to be hijacked and crashed into an important US building. The hijacking would then be blamed on Cubans, and this would open the door to warfare. This particular aspect of the operation is not a conspiracy, it's not a theory, it's fact. The whole thing was part of a document titled, Justification for US Military Intervention in Cuba, written by the Department of Defense and reviewed by the Joint Chiefs of Staff. The document was presented in 1962, but ultimately denied by John F. Kennedy. It was made public in 1997. There are a lot of conspiracy theories that say Operation Northwoods was never truly rejected, but just tabled until used in 2001 to justify war in the Middle East. What do you think of this theory? Number 5. Did the CIA kill JFK? There are a lot of theories surrounding the assassination of John F. Kennedy. The 35th President of the United States of America was killed at approximately 12.30 p.m. on November 22, 1963. He was assassinated in Dallas, Texas, in public and in an extremely violent fashion. In the aftermath of the president's death, investigators ruled it was Lee Harvey Oswald who acted alone. But before he could show up in court, Oswald was murdered by a member of the mafia named Jack Ruby. There have been so many discrepancies regarding this case and so many weird things happening surrounding the Kennedys, the mafia and the CIA, it's hard to know what to believe. One of the biggest theories is that the CIA organized the whole thing. Kennedy had recently fired CIA director Alan Dulles, 
You know, the guy who came up with the idea to dose prisoners with LSD. Kennedy also refused to give air support during the botched Bay of Pigs invasion in 1961. Finally, Kennedy was planning to cut the CIA budget by 20%. In 1979, the House Select Committee on Assassinations concluded that there was likely a second gunman firing at Kennedy. They suggested that conspiracy was probable, but never gave a conclusion as to what conspiracy that may be. This committee also concluded the CIA had nothing to do with the assassination. But they would say that. The truth is, even all these years later, there is still no definitive answer to the question, who killed Kennedy? Number 4. The CIA and El Salvador The CIA has a long and tumultuous history with the Central American nation of El Salvador. The nation itself has been embroiled in turmoil for centuries. In the past hundred years, military dictatorships ruled El Salvador. They've had civil unrest, guerrilla warfare, and a full-blown civil war that didn't end until the early 1990s. El Salvador is also one of the countries the CIA interfered with the most, as is evident by witness testimonies, unsealed CIA documents, and simply because we know it all happened. El Salvador was backed by the Soviet Union and Fidel Castro, which made them a prime target for US intervention. US advisors trained El Salvadoran military forces throughout the 1980s, they armed and trained these soldiers to fight battles on behalf of their favored political forces in the country against communism. But the soldiers trained by the CIA often had agendas of their own and committed human atrocities, killing an estimated 75,000 civilians. At the height of CIA interference, they had their own airbase in El Salvador, 60 helicopters, C-47 cargo planes, and a small fleet of fighter jets. They also had AC-47 gunships and helicopter gunships as support. Number 3. Project Resistance Project Resistance was a covert operation carried out by the CIA, with its mission being to collect background information on specific groups inside the country. These were groups that the CIA claimed posed threats to themselves. These weren't radical groups who posed a threat to the American people, but to the CIA and their facilities. Under the guise of Project Resistance, which ran from 1967 to 1973, the US government acquired massive amounts of intel, mostly on college students. They worked with local police departments and college campuses to track all student groups who openly opposed foreign policies on Vietnam. The whole point of this project was so that the CIA could watch all the groups and organizations who didn't like what they were doing in Vietnam. Keep in mind this was happening during the Vietnam War. The majority of Americans, especially young people, were not in favor of the war, but student groups seemed to be the most radical and the most outspoken, and so the CIA used their own campuses to help keep tabs on them. Forget campus safe spaces, the CIA used American learning institutions to spy on students. Number 2. H.T. Lingual H.T. Lingual, also called Project SR Pointer, was a really bizarre undertaking by the CIA to intercept mail. It was incredibly similar to the whole wiretapping thing done by the NSA, only with parcels and packages and envelopes destined for either the Soviet Union or China. The CIA began the program in 1952 and ran it until 1973. Mail items would be collected that were bound for China or anywhere in the USSR, taken to a facility in LA or New York, then opened, dissected, and resealed. The CIA even intercepted mail going to people they saw as dangerous, such as Hubert Humphrey, Martin Luther King, and John Steinbeck. In total, it's been estimated 28 million letters were examined by the CIA, and 215,000 were deemed suspicious. The letters that were suspicious were opened and perused. It's interesting to note that at the onset of the program, the CIA never opened any mailed items. They simply collected names and addresses for later use. But at some point, they decided it was just better to open everyone's mail. Number 1. Operation Shamrock Operation Shamrock was not initiated by the CIA, but rather the NSA. Still, it was one of the most blatant betrayals of trust ever perpetrated by a governing body in the US. Operation Shamrock began during World War II as a military intelligence program. It was in 1939 that the Army Signal Security Agency reached out to the three biggest wire service companies. There was ITT World Communications, Western Union International, and RCA Global. 
The government then tapped the cables to eavesdrop on all foreign-coded transmissions. It was the World War II equivalent of reading everybody's text messages. All messages telegraphed from the front lines back to America were monitored by military intelligence agents. After the war, Operation Shamrock evolved. Even though it wasn't entirely necessary, Army intelligence continued using the major communications companies to monitor wire traffic. With the creation of the National Security Agency, or NSA, in 1952, the eavesdropping continued. From their station in New York, NSA authorities continued to monitor all wire traffic. They kept doing this until 1974, when methods of communication changed. What do you think was the worst thing ever done by the CIA? Let me know in the comments and thanks so much for watching. Remember to hit subscribe if you haven't already and come back soon for more amazing videos from the channel.